Hey everybody, Mark Ignis here in the back room of Norman's Rare Guitars. Welcome back. This is another brand new episode of Guitar of the Day. Woo woo! Oh yeah. Um, we wanted to address the uh, our giveaway. We said we'd give away a guitar and we hit 300,000 subs and then Christmas time happened, all that stuff, we were close. Uh, we were coming very, very close to our 700th episode of wow. Guitar of the Day. It's a lot. We're gonna do a live, we're gonna give the guitar away live during the live broadcast of the 700th episode, okay? We're not sure exactly how we're gonna do it yet. We'll figure it out. We'll figure we have one of those dry erase boards where with the idea tree. <laughs> oh, shit. We'll figure it out a couple days before we'll let you know what's happening, but we will give it away on the 700th episode, which will be kind of towards the end of the, uh, the month. End of the month, right? Maybe not this coming Saturday, but another week or a couple of Saturdays yeah. from now. We'll do it. Saturday will be like 6.99. We'll do it that day, just so more people can watch the live stream. Um, so yeah, it's coming. Don't worry, we didn't forget about that. Also, I got in the mail, which is great. This is really cool. This was sent to me, copy of this book, uh, was sent to me by Chip Dayton, the guy who took all of the pictures of the Ramones. Look at this. Also signed it to me, which is very, very cool. I love the Ramones. He said he said something. He saw me wearing my Ramon shirt. Uh, and uh, love your playing sunshine of your love on a 335. I had that 335 yesterday. I could have done that song for you, Chip. Sorry, buddy. Did White Room, though. But, uh, man, really, really cool stuff. I didn't find the Ramones until a little later in life. I was more of a heavy metal kid. But in my late teen years, I kind of finally discovered the Ramones. As you can see, I, I saw Johnny Ramone and then kind of never changed. It's been wearing kind of the same shit ever since. But like the Ramone, thank you for sending that book over, Chip. Um, it's Flat Top Friday. You're going to like this. Serious Epi Gibby goals right now. <laughs> Check this out. Epi Gibby goals? Come on back. <laughs> From 1961, original FT79N Epiphone Texan. Original blonde finish. Short squatty headstock script logo. Okay. Epi Gibby goals. Hashtag Epi Gibby goals. <laughs> Paul McCartney, anybody? Yesterday? Ed Sullivan? Am I making any sense? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. McCartney played one of these on uh, on Sullivan when they did yesterday. Now his was actually a little bit later than this. This is hip. This is early. Uh, still have the, the short squatty headstock with the script logo. 63-ish into the 64 like there, like the casinos and stuff. You get that long, kind of skinny, taper elongated headstock. They do the same thing on the flat tops. So this has got the earlier three on a side version headstock. But this is basically uh, the Epiphone equivalent of the J45 or J50. So we have mahogany back inside, spruce top, rosewood board and bridge. At this era, still fixed bridge. You will start seeing adjustable saddle bridges on these just like you see on the J45s and J50s from that era once you hit around the, right around the same time as that headstock changes. So this is still more like a 50s style with the uh, fixed bridge. Other difference between this and the uh, Gibson J45, J50, scale length. The Epiphone guitar is pretty much across the board, we're all 25 and a half inch scale. So we're talking from nut to saddle that distance, 25 and a half inches, just like Fender scale where the uh, Gibson J45, Gibson J50 can be 24 and three quarters. So with about three quarters of an inch longer scale, the string gets pulled over a little bit of a longer distance. The tension's a little bit different. They tend to, uh, they tend to crack more. They have a little bit more tension. You get a little more attack out of the right hand. They sound fantastic. Other than that, it's pretty much a J50. Made in the same factory, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Same people, same woods. From 58 to 70 guys, Epiphone and Gibson are the same. For some reason, a lot of the Epiphone stuff ended up in the British Invasion artisans, where the Gibson stuff kind of stayed here. But it's good stuff, guys. Why don't we go out to the couch? It's a freaking Beatle guitar. And you know, you guys like the old Beatles songs. I tried to learn a couple of them. You'll point out the flaws, I'm sure. Let's go tickle this son of a bitch. We'll strum it with a pick. See what it can do. All right, we're out front. We have the 1961 Epiphone FT79N Texan original natural finish, mahogany back and sides. Spruce top. Let's put it through the paces, start with the fingers here, and then we'll switch to a pick.
let's pick up a flat pick, hit this thing a little bit harder with the right hand. See how it responds to a little more volume here. From 1961, original Epiphone FT79N Texan, original blonde finish. This is a little bit earlier than the Paul McCartney one. Still fixed bridge, short squatty Epiphone headstock with the script logo, original hard shell case. There's your Flat Top Friday. Check out the store on Instagram at Norman's Rare Guitars. Check out the guitars online at normansraregutars.com. And make sure you come back tomorrow for one final episode of Guitar of the Day for the Week. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another brand new episode of Guitar of the Day. Doyle Coil. <laughs> Bye. <Peace. laughs>